This video will review your basic operations for fractions, and I'll start with multiplying fractions. When you multiply fractions, you have a choice of just multiplying across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then reduce your answer, or you can do some internal canceling before you multiply. I'll do the first method, is just multiply across. 4 times 14 is 56. 7 times 15 is 105. I'm left with something that I can't tell if it reduces or not. That's the problem with just plain old multiplying to start. You may have something that reduces that you don't recognize. I know that both of these are divisible by 7 because I made up the problem. But you might not recognize that and you would have the answer wrong. 56 divided by 7 is 8. 105 divided by 7 is 15. That's why I think it's better to do your canceling before you multiply because you can keep the numbers small. 7 and 14 have a common factor of 7. So 7 divides into 7 once. 7 divides into 14 twice. And there are no more common factors. Multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 15 is 15. So canceling before you multiply is going to keep the numbers smaller and therefore is going to make the problem a little bit easier for you. Another problem, let's find something that's in common. I see 3 goes into both 3 and 9, so 3 into 3 once, 3 into 9 3 times. I look on the angle here and I know 7 goes into 21 3 times, 7 goes into 14 twice. Now I also have these 3's on top of each other. They do not have to be on an angle. Straight up and down is fine. So I can reduce 3 into 3 once, 3 into that 3 once, and all that's left in the top is 1 times 1, which is 1, 2 times 1, which is 2, and I'm finished with an answer of 1 half. I want to emphasize two things on this problem, and that is when you are doing your reducing, you can take a factor in the top with a factor in the bottom. You cannot do factors next to each other. One must be in the top, one must be in the bottom. They can be on an angle, or they can be up and down. It doesn't matter. Probably the easiest way to do this one is on the angle. 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 12 twice. 8 goes into 8 once, 8 goes into 16 twice. Then 1 times 1 is 1. These two are both on the bottom. You cannot reduce them. You get 4. But pretend you decided to do this reducing instead. You could have said, oh, 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into 12 three times. That's perfectly legal. Something in the top with something in the bottom. I could even look here and say 2 goes into 6 three times, 2 goes into 16 eight times. And now work on your angles. 3 goes into 3, 3 goes into 3, those are gone. 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 8, four times. Nothing's left except a 1 in the top and a 4 in the bottom. Now I still agree that the first way we did this was much easier. I'm just trying to make the point that you may reduce straight up and down. You may reduce on an angle. It doesn't matter. But it is a one for one thing. You cannot take, let's say, a 4 out of here and a 4 out of here and a 4 out of here. It's one thing in the top with one thing in the bottom. One more. Notice there are no common factors. You cannot reduce next door to each other like this. One has to be on the top, one has to be on the bottom. So this is one that all I can do is just multiply. 3 times 9 is 27, 5 times 10 is 50, and I'm finished with that problem. So that's your multiplying story. To divide, you must flip the second fraction and multiply. Flip only the second fraction. The first thing I have to do here is turn this into a multiplication problem. So this is 4 fifths times 15 fourteenths. You are only flipping the second fraction. Now that it's a multiplication problem, I can look for things I can reduce. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 three times. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 14 seven times. That's all the canceling I can do, so just multiply. 2 times 3 is 6, 7 times 1 is 7, and we're done. Let's rewrite it. Notice the first fraction does not get flipped. Flip the second fraction. And once it's a multiplication problem, now we can look for common factors. There's a common factor of 4. 4 into 4 once. 4 into 8 twice. No more common factors, so 7 times 1 is 7. 2 times 5 is 10. 
3 fifths divided by 7 eighths, leave the 3 fifths as is, flip the second fraction, we get 8 sevenths. And notice there are no common factors, so all you can do is multiply. 3 times 8 is 24, 5 times 7 is 35. Adding and subtracting fractions requires a common denominator, and in my opinion, this is just a little more difficult. First off, look at those two denominators, 4 and 5. What 4 and 5 both go into is 20. So our common denominator is 20. Once you decide that the common denominator is 20, we have to come up with new numerators. This numerator can't just come over. 3 over 4 is not the same thing as 3 over 20 not at all the same. So I have to create a new numerator by doing this. I know 4 times 5 is what makes the 20, so I must do the same thing and multiply by 5 on the top, which gives me 15. Same process down here. 5 times 4 is what created that 20, so multiply by 4 here gives me 16. So there it is, just looking a little more neat. And then you have a common denominator, you've created the new numerators, add those up, you get 31 over 20. No reason to change it to a mixed number, the improper fraction is just fine. Now, common denominator for 10 and 5 is 10. Because 5 goes into 10, our common denominator is 10. That means we pick up a freebie here. This already has a denominator I want, so automatically the numerator stays as 7. Here, I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 2 because 2 times 5 is what created the 10. That's going to give me an 8 here. What's left is just to add the fractions together. It gives me 15 over 10. But in this case, I have some reducing. I can reduce top and bottom by 5, and that's going to give me 2 thirds. If you have trouble naming the least common denominator, you can multiply the two denominators together, and you will get a denominator that will work. It might not be the absolute least, but that's okay. So if you look at something like 15 and 12, and you don't want to go through a big hassle to figure out the least common denominator, just multiply those together. 15 times 12. 15 times 12 is 180. So that is a common denominator. It is not the least, but that's okay. I can use 180. And then I have to follow the same process. But because we got this 180 by multiplying those two denominators together, it's pretty obvious what this is. 15 times 12 is what's going to give me the 180. And down here, 12 times 15 is what's going to give me the 180. So it might be a little easier that way because you don't have to think about what to multiply by. Whatever you're multiplying by is whatever the value was on the other denominator. I just need to multiply those up, and I'm going to get 84 for this one and 75 for that one. Add those up, keep the common denominator of 180, and you think you're finished. Because 159 doesn't appear like it has any factors, but it does. There's a little rule that's worth remembering, and that is the 3 rule. This fraction can be reduced by 3 because the sum of the digits in both the top and the bottom is divisible by 3. What do I mean by the sum of the digits? If you add 1 plus 5 plus 9, you get 15. 3 divides evenly into 15. That tells me I can divide the top by 3. Do the same thing on the bottom. 1 plus 8 plus 0 is 9. 3 goes into 9, so I know I can divide this on the bottom by 3, and that's going to give me a final answer of 53 over 60. Because we use a bigger denominator than necessary, we had to do some reducing at the end. Sometimes you have to reduce at the end regardless, but pretty much automatically, if you use a bigger denominator than necessary, you are going to have to reduce your fraction at the end. Subtraction is no different. We need a common denominator. For 8 and 4, the least common denominator is 8. Notice, I have automatically taken that minus and brought it over here so that I really do remember to subtract. This had a denominator of 8 already, so there's my freebie 7. This needs to be multiplied by 2. 2 times 1 is going to give me 2 right there. All I have to do is subtract 7 eighths minus 2 eighths is 5 eighths, and we're finished. One more subtraction. Common denominator for 15 and 2 is going to be the product of 15 and 2, which is 30. Notice I brought the minus over here. To get this 30, I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 2. To create this 30, I need to multiply this by 15. 
So those are the values I will multiply by to create my new numerators. And that's those right there, 22 thirtieths minus 15 thirtieths is 7 thirtieths. So that's just a quickie review of all your fraction operations.